Then the next part, let me just get rid of that. Next part is writing emails. So when it actually comes to, um, to writing emails, there's a few resources that I like to recommend. Uh, the first one is good sales emails. So good sales emails.com. What they did is they indexed a lot of sales emails naturally and they put them together where you can just read through them. So how I use it is, um, natural. Of course, I don't just copy and paste them. That would be back practice. And I, uh, I wouldn't advise that. But there, there's just some things that you want to experiment with and you want to see how other professionals in the industry, how they're doing it. So maybe you want to test uh, a different opening line or a different call to action in the end, or you want to see how they transition into um, asking for that meeting. So you just go through those emails. Maybe you'll find the ones uh, of competitors in your industry and you just have a look and see, okay, this is how they open their emails or these are the types of words that they're using, which is just really helpful because when you're writing your own emails every day, you just, you're, you're there with your own, with your own vocabulary, with your own knowledge. And it's always really good just to see what other people are sending and you can really pick up some, uh, some interesting tips and tricks there as well. So it's definitely something you want to check out, goodsalesemails.com. And you can find some really interesting, um, you can learn some really interesting tricks there. Then the opening line of your cold emails is something that deserves a lot more attention than what most people are giving it now. When I say opening line and don't mean subject line, because I bet you're putting a lot of thought into your subject line, you're testing your subject lines, but opening line, I mean that first line. So the first sentence. So it's, uh, you start with, Hey John, and then there's your first sentence. Now, the reason that needs a lot more attention than what you're probably giving it is not just because it needs to capture their attention. I mean, yes, it does. They need to read it. Need to, they need to think, well, you know what? Uh, this is not just some copy and paste called email. This is something I want to be reading. But another reason is because it shows up in their preview. So when, and I'm sure you're, um, you've received a bunch of emails today. You'll see it on your phone, for example. You'll see, uh, an email and then you see that first bit of that email. I have an email coming in right now on, and I see it on my smartwatch. So you see that first sentence and that needs to capture your attention. When that says, hi, um, I'm Hans and you do prospecting a lot faster. I'm going to delete it because I'm too busy. But when that has a sentence that really intrigues me, then I, I could think of a bunch of examples where I just, I was either, I got really curious or I thought, okay, this is something really valuable. I need to open it and I couldn't help but click it. So really make sure that you pre preview it for yourself. So just send your cold email to yourself, to your personal email address. And then you see it on your phone, you preview it on your, on your laptop, on your computer just to see what that first sentence looks like in the inbox and to make sure that it's something that you would want to click as well. Then make sure to remember your numbers when you're sending cold email. So this ties into that, um, that preview. So when you're sending cold emails, that first sentence of your email shows up in the preview. So someone has an inbox with um, 150 unread emails. They're going to scan. They're going to say, okay, see, okay, this one is interesting. This one isn't just based off who is the sender and what the preview looks like. So, uh, hi, I'm Hans and I had a business development going into the trash. Now, what you can do, for example, you go to wordcounter.com and you'll, um, they show you the amount of characters next to the amount of words and you write your preview and then, um, you'll try and keep it around 110 characters, um, which would, for example, be your first sentence. So your first sentence would be 110 characters, which is something that has like an interesting question or, um, for example, how is working from home going for you? Something that a colleague would send or an acquaintance would send. So that way people will see um, their preview, which then gets them to open the email, which is your main objective for that first sentence and that first preview. And then your next sentence should, should um, accomplish your next goal, which is for them to keep reading your email. Then the rule of three is also really important for cold email. Now, what I mean by the rule of three is something that we see all around us here. For example, you have uh, the three musketeers, three wise men, blood, sweat, and tears. And 
Uh, I'm sure you can think of some examples for yourself as well. And the reason behind that is us as humans, we find it a lot easier to process things that are in threes or to remember things that are in trees. It's actually um, a bit of a life hack that I've adopted for myself where I need to remember, um, I don't know, a grocery list or something. I break it up into parts of three. So um, when when you're then sending or writing a cold email, which first of all, you want to make scannable. So maybe you want to use some bullet points. Make sure they're not four, five or two bullet points. Make sure there are three bullet points. So maybe three um, reasons why they would need to book a meeting with you or three reasons why or three futures or benefits of, of your product or service. Just make sure that you keep that to three or maybe when you're... Um, when you're writing a sentence and you're giving examples not necessarily in bullet points make sure that you stick to three examples instead of two or four because that's just something that people find easier to process naturally then custom variables are of course very important for cold email and i'm sure you're already using them for for example first name so hi first name or hi company you maybe have the company um have it somewhere else in the email or have that in the subject line so um they're really really important and really powerful however there is a, uh, what i think is a much more interesting way of using them as well where you just have a completely custom first line so you would have high, uh, high for brackets, first name. Um, I noticed brackets company on, and then you can have brackets first line. Then what you do in your CSV, you have your columns. So you have um, email, first name, last name, company, and then you make another column that says first line. Under that first line columns, so under the header, you have your customized first line. So something personal. Maybe you looked them up on LinkedIn, you saw their last post. Maybe you went to the same school together. Maybe you saw that they uh, commented on um, on Gary V's post. You're a Gary V fan as well. So then for every single person, you can have a customized first line. Now, that, of course, has the biggest benefit, which is that, um, that it doesn't feel like a cold email. It feels like something personalized. But you can still do it at scale. So it will take you about an hour to do that for 50, maybe 100 people if you're fast. And then it's just a matter of adding that first line in there. Not fast. But it will help you get past spam fields because if all your emails look the same, spam filters detect that as well. So if that first sentence is different in each and every email, all of those emails look like different emails. It looks more natural. So you'll get into the inbox a lot more often. You'll get out of spam a lot easier. If your um, email sending software, your mail merge, doesn't have that option of adding another additional custom variable, because I know some of them, they don't have that option. What you um, could do, what you should do, is use Wizard Connect. But what you could do is you could, for example, take one that you're not going to use. So maybe you have um, first name, uh, last name, company, but you're not going to use last name. You're just going to say, hey, John, instead of, hey, John, John Smith. So you just take out, you'll, you'll keep the header that says last name, but you take everything that is on there, you take it out. You just put your first line in there. And then instead of it being called first line, it's called last name. But instead of there being their last name, it just has um, a personalized line that you can use somewhere in your email. Now, I have a different video on that on YouTube, um, just to the, the wizard.co YouTube channel. If that wasn't clear, you can just see the entire video right there. And make sure that your emails, your cold emails, they're scannable. So um, as you can see here, so what I what I put together here, so ever wonder why people start writing like this, line for line. As you know, people's online experience are moving to mobile devices. So I'm sure you've noticed people start writing like this, so line for line. The reason for that is because you're reading a lot more stuff. You're, you're consuming a lot more content on your mobile phone. So cold emails too. Maybe um, that busy CEO, he's on the go and he has, um, he has your email, opens it on his phone. It needs to be scannable. So you cannot have big chunks of text in there that look good maybe when you're writing them on Gmail on your computer. 
but it doesn't help with having your emails be scannable. Make sure you're using uh, short sentences, small sentences, and small um, paragraphs, so no big chunks of text. So if um, if you're still like writing blog posts uh, for call emails with just big chunks of text in there, send it to yourself and open it on your mobile phone just to see what it looks like. And if it doesn't read naturally, make sure you change it and you break it up a little bit. Then copywriting for cold email. Now, copywriting is not my my uh, my strong suit. So I'm I'm not a native English speaker, as you can tell. But that actually works to my advantage because uh, Boomerang and HubSpot they carried out studies where they saw that um, emails written in third grade reading level have the highest response rate. I think the response rate was uh, between 50 and 20% higher than, than the next option. So what it means is just you, you need to stop trying to sound really smart because you have a really cool way of describing your futures or your company, but people are busy. They want to read your email really quickly and it needs to be simple. So. Just really make sure that you're writing plain and simple English so people can scan your email really, really quick, know exactly what you do and what's in it for them. And you will see that your responses to your cold emails will be a lot better. Then make sure you keep your emails under 200 words. So in a study that uh, Boomerang did, the response rate for emails under 200 words was actually 50% better or 50% higher than emails that were much longer. So um, make sure that you have around 200 words, 20 lines in there. They have better click-through rates, better response rates. Um, and again, just really make sure that you don't make them too short either. When it's just one or two sentences, you're not going to get any responses there. But the reason why I'm saying this is just, I've seen a lot of cold emails that could be a blog post that are, I don't know, 500, 750 words almost, where you're just having a full pitch in there and a company presentation, I don't know what, and they're too long, people are not going to read them. So what I usually do, I write my cold emails, I run through wordcounter.com just to see how long they actually are. And then I really try and keep things around 150, 200 words. And that way I know that um, the length at least is optimal and people are not going to see my email, think, oh, oof, this is so long. I'm not going to read it and delete it. Using humor for uh, cold emails is really important as well. So um, I'm not the funniest guy in the world. I do prospecting a lot faster. One thing I sometimes do is you, you divide your cold outreach, you divide it up by, by geographic region. So you, it's December, you have your prospects in New York and say, hey, John, I hope you're not getting too cold over there. Now, it's, it's not really funny, is it? But it's, it's, uh, it's lighthearted and people might, might think, oh, you know what, yeah, it's pretty cold. And they, um, they, it, it just, it's, it's a lot different than you just jumping into your pitch. So make sure uh, that you do use this uh, with a bit of caution because uh, I have a very different sense of humor than you probably. And you don't want to come off as a clown. You don't want to ruin your rapport. And you also don't want to offend any people. Now, someone who is really good at this is um, uh, charm-offensive.co.uk. He um, actually got somewhat famous for writing a drunken cold email, which was was pretty funny, and he got a lot of responses there. And he um, he really uses wit and humor in his cold outreach. So make sure you check out Charm Offensive and see some of the templates and tips that he has on how you can can best use humor for cold outreach. When you're doing cold outreach, also make sure that you're using social proof, that you're leveraging social proof. So what I mean by that is um, if, you, if you're if you lucky enough to already have some really big clients, make sure you use them in your, your email. So for example, with Wiza, not too long ago, we were also reaching out to sport professionals and one of our clients, um, then the, the Brooklyn Nets. So we naturally put that in our email saying, hey, we work with Amazon Cloudera, but also with the Brooklyn Nets. Now, you need to have that social proof in there so people can see that you're actually a real company and they, that other companies already have put their trust and their faith in you. So 
some other mistake people are making when they're doing call out is saying we're working with a lot of companies in your industry we're working with some of um, the leaders in your industry now if you don't then actually have those names in there then what could also happen is people are going to assume that you're lying that you're not being truthful because if you're working with industry leaders i mean anyone can say that you want to see some names in there and then even better if then people will go to your website they would see those same logos on there just to see that um that you're actually working with those clients one worked subject lines for cold email they're pretty amazing i think so not too long ago, I listened to a podcast and you can read it here. Uh, a guy was doing email marketing for a superfood company, a supplement company, and they were testing um, subject lines on a really big email list. So this guy, he had, I think, millions of emails going out and they tested uh, different ones. And one of them was Cashew, which is a weird one, but it really intrigued people to open his email, to read the email. That was a subject line that really did the best. So um all lowercase one word is just a lot different than your average uh question about marketing for a company which which people will start recognizing it becomes a pattern so once something becomes a pattern you as a salesperson or marketer need to make sure that you're breaking that pattern so when you have um a simple subject line that says question or a uh, quick call, for example, just all lowercase. It's something that your friend, brother, colleague would send, um, which makes it seem um, a lot less like a cold email and something people would prefer to open. And um, a little game to make your cold outreach, your cold email a lot better. And something that I still struggle with every single day that I'm writing cold emails is not to start a sentence with I, we, or your company name. So for example, I would like to, it's yes, of course you would like to, but it's not about you. You're writing a cold email and people are reading it and it needs to be about them. Or I thought that, which is not only passive language, but it also starts with I, um, or we help and we can do this, we can do that, which is great, but um, not to be too harsh, but people don't care. They're busy, they have a lot of emails in their inbox, they're getting a lot of cold pitches, and it really needs to be about them. So a little game um, that you can play is, is where you make I or we almost a forbidden word, and you really try not to start any sentence with I or we, and really try and make your email really uh, customer-centered or, or reader-focused, and that way you'll write a lot stronger cold emails. The indirect ask for cold email, I think, is something really powerful as well. So I remember um, a case study that um, Outreach Labs, I think they're called, did, and they're from they're the, um, they're part of Predictable Revenue from Aaron Ross. And your your average cold email ends with Do you have fifteen minutes next Friday afternoon to jump on a quick call, which used to work really well, but it's is really pushy as well. And one way, one ask that they experimented with was, uh, is that something, is that something you're interested in hearing more about? Which is not, um, is not too, is not in your face. It's really just, do you want to hear more? And what do you think? There is also something that we've been experimenting, experimenting with, and it works really well where you're some, where you're asking, uh, something you're interested in hearing more about. Is that something that you think could be a good fit? Um, would you care to explore if there's a fit here? And you'll get, you'll get more responses of people saying, yeah, let's talk or hey, let's set up a call. But also people saying, no, thank you. And we've actually had people say yes. And I really appreciate that the way that you're asking it, it really made me feel like there wasn't too much pressure, which made me, uh, which, which inclined me to reply. So when you have those extra interactions, it also helps with your email deliverability. The more interactions you have in your email, replies, favorites, uh, people forwarding your emails, etc the better your um, your inbox rate will be. So the more you will get into the inbox. So when these people did that case study, actually found that their open rates also went up next to their reply rates. So it's definitely something that you want to experiment with for yourself. Personalizing your cold emails is something that you already know about. 
you're hopefully already doing, uh, but it's really, it can be tricky to find that right balance between personalizing cold emails and how much is too much and what you should be doing. So I think the best way of personalizing cold emails is to, to really have that one personalized sentence in there where you just have one column in your CSV, you have a custom sentence, and that way you personalize your cold emails to each and every recipient. But um, if, if you don't have that luxury or time, maybe you're alone, uh, uh, you're a small business owner, you're um, just a lowly sales guy, and your, your time is, uh, is more scarce, then uh, it can be tempting to have too much personalization in there to try and make up for, um, for not being hyper-personalized. So, just really make sure you have the right balance. Now, one way that I would like that I like to use is to have personalization in the subject line, for example. So, uh, one one of my favorite subject lines is first name X Hans or first name X Wiza. Then um, it really it, it piques their interest usually when they see their own name in there, and it really helps with uh, with getting your emails opened. And then just make sure that you're not uh, not peppering it too much through the email. Just have it in the subject line, um, uh, preferably their first name in the subject line. Obviously, start with their first name and then make sure you have the company name at least once in there. And then just take it from there. And then once you have a bit more time, try and have a personalized first line in there.